Hey everyone. Uh, happy Thursday, February 9th. It's about 1130 on the West Coast and it's time for another market update. I would love to tell you that uh, we won the battle and stayed under 6% average rates, uh, but unfortunately things did not go our way this last week and I'll get into the details of that. Uh, so first, last Thursday, I told you on Friday, last Friday, we were going to be getting the all important BLS job report. Uh, the reason that's important is because the Fed is using current employment numbers looking so positive as uh, a reason why they should continue to raise rates or not cut them at all going forward. Um, so the BLS jobs report, we expected 185,000 jobs out in December. That came out at plus 517,000 jobs, which was super hot, not expected. Um, there's a lot of debate whether or not that number is accurate or not, but it really doesn't matter whether it's accurate or not because the markets reacted like it was. Uh, so as you can see, this is the 10-year treasury note, which is a good one to look at because when this goes up, mortgage rates go up. When this comes down, mortgage rates come down. Uh, you can see things dropped after last Thursday when I did my video. Um, we got the disinflation, uh, disinflation comments from Powell. Things were going good. Even overnight, we dropped a little lower. I thought, oh, this is a good sign. We're going to stay under 6%. Uh, but then Friday morning, we got this jobs report. came in at plus 517. And you can see the 10-year treasury jumped. And then since then point, it's been on an upward trend. Uh, we had a nice, uh, couple days of rally, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. But today, it's back up uh, because of some other reasons, uh, the little technical reasons I won't get into. But we're about at 3.67 right now on the U.S. Treasury. So as you can see, this had a big negative effect on uh, things and therefore on mortgage rates. So because of that, Powell and the other Fed regional chairs uh, continue to talk tough, saying it's better to over overdo things on rates um, than underdo things. Uh, they want to make sure they kill inflation completely. And they're pointing at this, you know, this BLS jobs report is a sign that everything's going great. So if you want to get an idea of what we're dealing with here, Here's one of the chair's comments. He said, the housing market is starting to show signs of life again, making our job harder. So basically they're saying good things happen in our industries, you know, realty and, and, and loans uh, is bad for them and it's going to cause more inflation, which again, you could definitely debate that. I don't think that's necessarily true. Uh, but uh, the next thing we got was because of the Fed and, and talking tough and these chairs talking tough and all this data, the Bank of England came out and the ECB, Europeans, uh, uh, basically Fed version, came out and they talked tough too. So they they echoed uh, the same talk that Powell was making and saying that inflation has to be killed and, and uh, it's better to overdo than underdo. And therefore that had a bad negative, uh, anything global will affect our stuff and that contributed to the slide. Um, so basically, you know, but stocks reacted pretty positively, but bonds, which have more to do with uh, mortgage rates, they were bearish. And that tends to be pretty consistent with how things normally go. Stocks tend to be a little optimistic. Bonds tend to be a little bit more conservative with things. Um, so right now, that's where they're at. Something to keep an eye on. There's definitely a difference in narrative. You see a lot of CEOs, uh, besides the stock market being positive about things, you see a lot of CEOs talking about recession. And while there's this whole other media narrative talking about um, a soft landing now. And so it's just something to keep an eye on. There's definitely a battle of narratives going on out there. Uh, purchase app, some positive news. Purchase apps were up 3.1% last week, uh, down 30% year over year. Um, but keep in mind that last year at, on this date, the average conventional was at 3.9%. So that would be a reason why maybe we're down 30% year over year compared to where they're at now. Um, this is good to see purchase apps going up because last week rates went down. I'm assuming when I get these same numbers next week uh, with a bad week going on this week in rates, this is probably going to be a negative number, unfortunately. Uh, and then another positive news, we got initial job claims going back to this whole jobs issue that we got to keep an eye on. Uh, they were expected to come in a, a 190,000 new unemployment claims. It came in 196,000. So that's a positive for the bond market and for mortgage rates, because again, this kind of fights this narrative from the uh, from the Fed and, and this BLS report that everything's going you know swimmingly with, uh, with the labor market. So uh, again, not a big jump, but at least a jump enough that maybe it, 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 it settles things down a little bit. Um, and then CoreLogic came in. Um, let's take a look at this real quick. CoreLogic came in. This is uh, appreciation across the country. Uh, year over year, looking at 6.9% gains in, in, in house prices. Uh, month over month in December, we dropped uh, four tenths of a, a percent. Uh, next month, they expected to drop uh, two tenths of a percent. But year over year, they expect uh, nationwide, again, this is all regional, uh, not regional, uh, nationwide at 3% gains, which is, is positive wealth creation. Uh, here's another take on this kind of. Uh, Goldman Sachs came out. They they were saying 10% drop from peak to trough. Peak to trough means the very highest prices got, um, let's say March of last year, to the very lowest they think they'll be. They were thinking nationwide it would drop 10%. Now they've adjusted to 6%. So that's good to see. 
Um, where does that leave us? We're at a 30, uh, the average today was at 6.32. So last Friday or Thursday when we did my video, got down to 5.99. We're up to 6.32 as today. It actually got up to 6.45 a couple days ago. Um, and we've had a couple days of rally, but today uh, there was a bond auction that didn't go very well, a 30-year bond auction. That looks like that spike. So I expect when I see it tomorrow, it'll be probably closer to that 6.4 number. Um, so again, we, we tried to get underneath that 6% number. We did for one day and now we're back above it. So as we talked about, it looks like things are going to kind of go in a little bit of a uh, up and down. And like I said, we need to keep an eye on these narratives, the soft landing compared to um, hard landing. A hard landing would be a recession. And again, you see today a survey came out, CEO, CEOs fully expect a recession. Um, but keep in mind, uh, going back, anytime we come out, uh, go into recession, uh, rates come down. Oh, I'm sorry, this is unemployment rates. So unemployment rates. Unemployment rate is really low right now. Um, that seems like a good thing. Janet Yellen was touting that yesterday, why is the reason we're not in a recession. But as you can see, the unemployment rate's always really low before we go into recession. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then here's another thing. Um, I thought there was a very interesting uh, graph to look at compared to going back to 2005 compared to now. Um, you know, in 2005, two out of five mortgages had an adjustable rate mortgage, meaning it could change based on what's going on with Fed, uh, Fed rates and all that. Right now, we're at two out of 100 in 2021. Uh, so fixed rate ruled them all. Everybody refied to a fixed rate. Not a lot of arms out there. So that's a positive sign. We don't have to worry about like with other countries where a lot of people have arms like Australia and, and even England. We don't have to worry about those coming due here in the next year. And all of a sudden, uh, a bunch of things jumping quite a bit. So that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, just keep in mind, you know, right now, uh, working with any borrowers, we can do buy downs, arms, stuff like that, but every borrower should be okay with wherever, if worst case happens. Let's say if, if rates don't come down and you can't refi or, you know, it goes to the higher amount, the borrower has to be aware that that's what they're getting themselves into. Cause you know, we, no one's, a, no one has a crystal ball. No one can predict exactly what's gonna happen. Um, we do expect things to get better as we go along this year, but, Things unexpected happen, wars happen, pandemics happen, things like that. So we got to keep an eye on all this, uh, but it's our job as as realtors, as lenders, as uh, people in the industry, and as, as borrowers too, um, to do what's best for our clients, for ourselves, and make sure we put ourselves in a good position. So if you guys need anything at all, do not hesitate to reach out. Besides that, I hope you have a great day, and let's hope we have a great week.